Sorry. What'd you say? What'd I say? What did you say? I'm working. Sorry. What'd you say? What'd you say? Sorry, you're making me screw up. I am? Huh? What yeah. are you doing there? Using some structure bond. It doesn't look like it. I'm only doing small dots as I was It is a corner. Yeah, did you want me to do more? I think you should just worry about what you're doing and focusing on so it doesn't end up like some of your other projects. No, that was, that was deep. Huh? That was deep. That, that cut deep? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you want to? What are you doing? Oh my God. Don't you have to go film? I was trying to, but yeah, then you had to open up that, you that trap of yours. You didn't have to come over here. I was talking to myself. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. You see what we're dealing with on a minute by minute basis out oh, here? Oh yeah. You enjoy Listen, it. You hear him? You hear him? Percent excavated. Dan and Jack stayed late last night to kind of hog out a majority of the soil. Now here's where it makes all the sense in the world to have a lot of guys on the team. Everybody shoveling. Much like the daisy chain of cobbles that you saw yesterday when we were rocking in the urns. It really, really helps to have many hands when doing this. That way we get it done nice and quick so that we can get back to the artistic part inside the liner. So we're going to leave this pad right here. Dan's going to dig himself just a little ramp so he can get the machine down here if he needs to. But we want to get this entire area prepped and ready because because we're gonna be running brick walls inside the liner, much like we did back over here in the spheres. So it's super, super important that this all stays nice and level, especially kind of a two foot offset running along our walls. I guess once we get into here, it's not as important, it's, but it is nice. It'll just make for a nice clean look as that gravel lays nice and flat over top of the liner. Down here, you can see we have a deeper section. This is where we are going to have small aqua blocks along the bottom. We're gonna build our retaining wall and water walls will sit on top of the aqua blocks here and then we will have kind of almost look like a sunken fire pit but that will be our intake right here in the middle of this aqua block area so have a lot of work cut out for us today but again we have a lot of guys and we're going to continue to cruise as long as we stick to our game plan and work together i'm very very confident that we can get this done we also have to do a steaming these two liners together for the pond liner with the rest of it so that'll take some time as well which always slows things down but we're going to do it and we're going to do it right so jack you ready oh yeah love the enthusiasm So right now we're setting up our string lines, making sure that we get all of our right angles for our two walls here. We are building this wall currently that will hold back the collection of urns as well as the landscape in here. This will be a six foot tall wall by the time it's all said and done. Two of it will be in water, four of it will be out of water. The cool thing about this though is these three sections here are actually our stacked slate spillway walls that we are going to incorporate into the brick wall itself. This wall right here is this is going to be a planter. This will also be four foot tall. This will have a green wall attached to it. We'll probably shift this down to two feet and then have the live wall go four feet above that. That will provide a screening between the shed as well and the rest of the pond. And then this wall will be four feet above grade with the three spillway bowls. Dropping water four feet down, ribbon falls into this side of the pond and of course our bridge element again. So we just wanna make sure that when we're setting our string lines that all of these are 90 degree angles, which is what they're supposed to be. You don't wanna be standing back on the patio here looking back this way and this wall be cockeyed one way or the other or it's curved or bowed so we just want to make sure that everything's nice and straight the same way that we set up over here so that we can continue to cruise right along and it will look fantastic when we're all done all of our pumps will be housed back here behind this wall and they will be disguised by that four foot wall coming up as well what we're going to have plumbing running this way as well as plumbing running this way up and through here to go back to our urn 
Jack is cruising right along. Jack, has leveling these out been pretty easy? Yeah, so before we put the slider in, we actually came in and I knew where this wall was gonna be at. So I came in and I made sure that we were level side to side and front to back our entire width of this wall. And so right now, I mean, there's been maybe two or three blocks that I've had to actually level off and hit with a dead blow. And we always say like the prep work's always the most important part. Yep. And in this instance, I mean, I'm cruising with this. Nice, that's awesome. Well, that's that was the whole goal is to make this as quick as possible because we knew that setting the bottom course is always the most the biggest challenge so exactly when we were over there it just knew it took us forever we were kind of at a chokehold of setting this bottom course because you can't have one person starting on each end one person has to work from one end and work its entire way around well you know we could take your word for it but well it's between the lines yeah that's all that matters that's all that matters good so we've got this wall going in he's gonna work his way basically to about where this brick is and then the rest of it will be bridge over here so then we've got dan the rest of the gang working on this wall which is a super important wall because this is what's going to retain all of this stuff as well as hold up our stack slate spillway walls. So you'll notice back over here, Dan is standing on top of four three inch pipes that we have elbowed and stubbed up back behind us. So one of these is going to be for the three spillway walls that will sit here. The other three lines, one, two, three, will go back that way and then feed our urn section back over there. So we wanted to make sure that we had all this stuff inside the liner first. This is all going to get dug out. We're gonna have small aqua blocks over all this footprint. So we went ahead and ran this stuff inside knowing that we're gonna go ahead and cover the aqua blocks with a huge drop liner. So we'll end up covering these pipes as well. So they'll be nice in disguise. So again, plan this stuff out ahead of time. It makes your life so much easier when you're trying to run a project like this where you have to be creative with the plumbing. There's so many things to look out for, but hopefully those are just some of the ways that you guys can see how we're actually doing the plumbing and putting everything together in here. And then we have Luis and JD over here continuing to work. Looks like for some reason, the coping did not bond. So we're gonna go ahead and re-glue these things. We're also going to be adding another course. After looking at it yesterday, I want these things to feel a little bit more sunken and as if they are big stack slate boulders in here. So I think it'll look more impressive if we go up one more course and then the coping up here. So we're gonna do a very similar thing with the liner on the back side of here as we did over there, where we're gonna wrap it over the back of these or up the back and over the top of this course, put another course on top and then our coping just to keep that liner up high and hold in all the splash that will occur from our stack slate spheres. Really important also that while Jack's doing this, he doesn't come too far over this way because our bridge element right here needs to come to a certain point. So his corner needs to butt up with the side of the bridge and the other side of the bridge needs to butt up with this rock right in here. Hope that makes sense. You'll see it as we go, but it's looking awesome. So we are continuing to make the progress that I anticipated we would. I truly thought we were gonna make a heck of a lot of headway today and we are. What'd you say? What'd I say? What did you say? I'm working. Sorry. What'd you say? What'd you say? Sorry, you're making me screw up. I am? Huh? What yeah. are you doing there? Using some structure bond. It doesn't look like it. I'm only doing small dots as I was It is a corner. Yeah, did you want me to do more? I think you should just worry about what you're doing and focusing on so it doesn't end up like some of your other projects. No, uh, that was, that was, huh? that was deep. Did that, that cut deep? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you want to? What are you doing? Oh my God. Don't you have to go film? I was trying to, but yeah. then you had to open up that, that to, trap of yours. You didn't have to come over here. I was talking to myself. I just, Mm -hmm. You see what we're dealing with on a minute by minute basis out here? Oh yeah, you enjoy Listen, it. You hear him? You hear him? Anyways, before we were so rudely interrupted. I didn't ask you to come here. Come here, Jack. How do you think we're doing today? I think we're doing really good. Yeah? Yeah. And why? Because we're building walls right now. We're building walls? Yeah. Which is leading us to what? We're one step closer to uh, filling this pond up. One step closer. The challenge that I think we really ran into today was that EPDM or the polyethylene liner that we are standing on top of. Yeah, so we, instead of using our normal EPDM liner, we use this, I screwed that. Just give it a shot, give it a shot. Polypropylene. Nope. Nope, wrong. Eh. This is a polyethylene liner. The reason we are using the polyethylene liner is because currently, much like the rest of the world, we are on material shortages. We have historically used EPDM liner over the last 15 years or so. 20? So 20 plus years, yeah, but we've done a few large projects using polyethylene and polypropylene liners. It's kind of, uh, we phased it out a long time ago because of the creative freedom that using EPDM allows us. Unfortunately, we weren't able to use our normal EPDM liner because we are saving it for you guys and girls out there to build your ponds. And we are testing out this polyethylene liner that Dave Kelly, the head of product development, is getting us to try out. And if it fails, it fails here in the sandbox, not in somebody's backyard. 
backyard. We're always looking for alternatives or maybe better ways, but alternatives or solutions to the challenges that we're running into on a daily basis on our job site. And this is one of them. Material shortage is one that we're facing as a company that you guys are facing out there as well. Whether you're a contractor or a homeowner hoping to get DIY, hoping to get some of these DIY kits with the EPDM. We will still continue to sell EPDM liner, but on some of these big projects, we're hoping that the polyethylene liner will be a nice alternative or a suitable alternative to fit our needs. So if we can build with it, you guys definitely can because we're going to put it through the riggers here in the sandbox and find out if it's worth it. So that's a big reason why we are here is to be a research and development arm of the company for you guys and for us at Aquascape so that we can continue to develop products that will stand the test of time but also be user friendly and be able to check all of the boxes of what we're looking for when putting in water features. So we're trying it. It's definitely less malleable but it still folds. It's not at nearly as soft as the EPDM. You can see the difference in the two but this has some woven reinforcement actually in this liner. I don't know if you can see it here but you can see it's engineered just a little bit differently. There's some woven reinforcement in there whereas the EPDM does not. So this polyethylene stuff is nice. We did end up according to the manufacturer they said that you can actually seam this stuff so we're gonna try it in here. So we seamed our EPDM to the polyethylene doing our normal seam procedure where we primed the EPDM liner, put our three inch double-sided tape down, then primed the back side of our polyethylene liner, attached it to the double-sided tape, and then primed it again, and then put a piece of six inch cover tape over the top. So we ran a seam all the way across. So I'm hopeful that it works. It looks like it actually held up really, really well. I was super surprised. The polyethylene like sucked up that primer like crazy, but so far so good. We haven't had any kind of detachment from the cover tape from the liner itself. So we'll see, but we will be sure to let you guys know. Um, but it is what it is. So Garrett, Steve, and Grant are working on finishing up that wall, carving it into that urn, and then this wall will continue to go this way. So it looks fantastic. This wall is going in. Once we get above grade here, it's going to go this way and then back that way to create this raised planter over here. So it is coming together. Nice. cow everybody yep you guessed it we're back another day another dollar well spent on guys like these. We made uh, really good progress yesterday. Towards the end of the day, we, we kind of grinded it out or ground it out. I would say grinded it out, sounds better. We did a great job kind of plowing through the rest of the day. We worked, I don't know, about 6.30, 7 o'clock here in our world in YouTube land. You know what that means, it's about an extra 15 seconds of video. But we stayed late, tried to figure out some of this stuff, really get that wall set. If you remember, we had a huge ramp in here. And the reason we left that ramp is because we needed to get a couple more boulders up in here to finish out this urn area but we couldn't do that because everything kept wanting to fall in on us. So we had to build this wall, fortify it by gluing all these together, using these stabilization blocks in through here, not quite sure what they're called, but then we got our stack slate walls in here, the bottom course, filled them with gravel. The reason we did that is we're not going to backfill a lot in through here behind the liner, and we're gonna try and keep as minimal amount of weight off of these walls as we can. So we wanted to make sure that these rocks are nice and sturdy and stable so that when we bring the liner up we can gently backfill this stuff and all we have to do is worry about keeping the liner up i don't want to put a bunch of weight in here all in through here josh and jack pazinski are going to start working on plumbing the walls we're going to run a five to nine for all three of these we're going to do two more extension pieces or what would be the small base in our catalog and then we'll put the topper on so that the top of those walls are all the way up here right and you can just barely see the top of that jumbo urn as you're 
walking down the bridge. So since we got that done, we had Dan dig out the rest of this area with the machine and the guys were in there kind of fine tuning everything. You can see DK over here leveling everything off. This is what we talked about earlier in the video, making sure that everything is nice and level so that when we lay these walls down on top of this polyethylene liner, we're not having to beat the blocks into place, shim up a considerable amount. Everything just kind of goes in nice and seamlessly. So it really pays to do that due diligence and pay very, very close attention to detail as we're going. So once we get that final elevation set in there, we've got our trough set out for our small aqua blocks. We'll fold this liner back over, drop all of our small aqua blocks in place, and then we will continue this wall going directly across. This is that wall that's gonna have the one, two, three stack spillway bowls sitting on top of the walls at a four foot height, and then a bunch of trees and stuff back behind it to disguise it. So super important that this wall, the bottom course is nice and level. Also what's exciting is we have the guys from Nunez Nursery and Landscaping out here. They're gonna help us do the patio. I'll introduce them to you here in a little bit, but we went ahead and got their area prepped for them. They're gonna excavate out this area where they need, bring in some sand, and then they're gonna start that flat work that will be so crucial for this design, which is gonna be all that seating space in through here. So you can see them, they're kind of figuring out business stuff right now, elevations, but I'll get them on camera here in a second. So glad they're here. Cruxlon, thanks for helping us out. Cruise buddy, you're the man. Obviously, shout out to Unilock as well on helping us out with all this product. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down and stop yapping and get back to work. Enjoy the show. feverishly to try and hit our deadline. Tons of people moving, keep cruising, run along. We got Dan, Luis, and Jack working on this wall right here. This is gonna be that four foot tall wall that will border this side of the display. You can see Steve's over here kind of buttoning up some of the gravel. What we're doing is we use a bunch of this bag gravel that you see all laying down through here. We used them essentially like sandbags and then we opened up a few bags to really fill those joints. The reason we did that with the gravel on that side and that side is to get these aqua blocks under compression. I don't want these things walking around on me shifting this way or that way because we are going to have a substantial amount of weight on top of these, not only with our intake area here, but more importantly, our bridge element. So I really, 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 really can't stress enough how solid these things need to be because we have probably at least a ton and a half of weight combined throughout the entire bridge. We're going to do six by six posts. So we've got to lay those out. I'm going to put a series of dots down, figure out where those six by six posts are going to go so that we can fill the aqua block with gravel so it's a nice solid base and that aqua block panel doesn't have the run the risk of being point loaded and crushed under the weight of the bridge. So Steve's gonna continue his way this way, get everything under compression and we should be good. Once we do that, then we'll come back with our scrap pieces of polyethylene and we're gonna layer the entire top of this aqua block infiltration area with the polyethylene liner and then we will cut a hole inside of that intake area or what will look like a sunken fire pit and what'll happen is all the water will funnel down through that intake opening and go down through the aqua blocks and go over to our pumps over here which will come down to our pumps hidden back over here. Those will sit right on the ground. We have nine pumps over here. We're gonna have a series of five to nine pumps all lining this trough sitting right on the bottom. So we're able to purpose all the water in this thing. But the idea is this is just one big intake bay and it will make much more sense as we get into the video and get the liner down. I'll show you how that's gonna go. So, some big progress, hey, hey. <laughs> So Grant's over here priming this scrap piece of polyethylene and he asked me, why are we doing this? Well, it's an excellent question by Grant. What this is doing is this is going to create basically a watertight seal over the top of the aqua blocks. The reason we're putting this drop liner over top of the aqua blocks is because if we didn't have this, all that water would want to funnel down into the aqua blocks and then work its way over to our pumps which sit back behind this wall. So what this is doing is this is blocking off that bottom area, preventing the water from 
from going down in the aqua blocks and getting pulled that way. What it also does is it's going to allow us to create a raised intake bay over there using our brick, our wall stone, to create our own skimmer, kind of an in-pond skimmer. So it's a really, really cool effect. We've only done it on a handful of jobs ever that I can remember. But what this is doing is disallowing the water to get lost underneath the aqua blocks and it's forcing all of the water to be sucked in through one area and that's going to be sitting back over there. So that's what this drop liner is doing. We still have to cover up all that gravel back over there so we'll seam another piece on. But it's a great way for us to get rid of this scrap polyethylene and create our skimmer, our in-pond skimmer. So, yeah. for us to put that six inch cover tape like we normally would after we do the double sided tape connecting the two pieces of the liner. Because this is inside the pond, I'm not looking for it to be watertight. So I'm not even gonna bother wasting my time putting that cover tape or our resources. But what it did do is we've got a nice little seal here. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this as is and we're just gonna end up putting gravel right over the top of this and you'll never even know that this is here. We have to continue back over here to put another piece on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing again, put a piece of double sided tape and then run another piece of polyethylene in order just to seal all this up. Then what I will do along this backside is I'm just gonna lay a long bead of foam going all the way around here, all the way along the base of my wall there, and the one back behind me. And then we'll have ourselves a nice kind of vaulted reservoir underneath. So I think we're at a good spot right now where I think we should probably call Joe. Yeah. And because he gave me a time to call, he and that was about a half hour ago, and he said 15 minutes, so I'm 15 minutes late. But I think we should get him on the horn and kind of run him through the project. Yeah. And I'm sure our viewers out there would love to hear that conversation. So I'm gonna call him. It's weird, his his area code is one nine hundred. I can't tell you the rest. I hope he loves it. If he doesn't, I'm gonna be feed. I'll just tell him to, you know. Hey, bud. Good man, I got you on camera. Say, say hi to everybody out there. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're sure that the viewers wanted to hear some of your input. So first, how was your day? You look handsome today. How's <laughs> uh, my day? Good. Good, Good man. We got, a, we got a lot of snow here, so I've been dealing with that. Nice. So yeah. Yikes. Fun. Well, I know that you're a busy man, and uh, but I also know that you put a lot of time into this design, so I know you don't want to also see us the whole time, so I'm gonna turn the camera around and kind of walk you through, and why don't you just kind of tell us how you want to do things differently, or if we're on the right track, and... <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a movie set, but a construction set at the same time. So here we go, bud. So dude, here's that aqua block intake area. We're just finishing up, putting the drop liner over the top. We'll seal up everything all around here. So that's all aqua blocks underneath there. And then right over there is where we were gonna locate the in-pond skimmer, right? Right. Okay. How do you think this looks so far? We've gotta finish off that corner right there and then coping, but it's gonna match up perfectly. And then obviously we're gonna continue that wall up as well. Are we on the right track? Track. Yeah, is that six feet? That is six feet, yeah. It's four feet above water. Four, four feet above water, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and then we've got, we've got all of our plumbing for the walls and the urns, all that stuff running up that way and then we'll stub it all there up that way. It'll be hidden by the wall and then we'll plant all this up really heavy in through here. Right. All right, cool. And then we want to be able to have a, a visual of that large urn. I was hoping kind of through that corner, but gotcha. have a side. Well, I could, you know what? Here, let me hop on the deck and see. I can make that happen. Like we could do something low. I think that's actually the way you had it drawn in your design, like some low stuff down in here. Okay, because I'm gonna light that thing all the way around too. All right, so so our bridge um, is going to start right here. I've got kind of the, the post marked out right here. It goes out that way, then over, and then it lines up just on the right side of that wall right there. So as long as we did everything right, I think we did, with our measurements, it'll lead you right here, and it'll fit perfectly between this wall yeah, 
planter. So, and then this is that planter, right? And that'll butt right up to the patio here. Patio is going in right now. Peninsula. I was thinking just of doing like a landslide of ferns and stuff in through here to kind of break it up and carry that back in. And then around this column, we're just going to put a bunch of those trees and really kind of hide it and do like a plant peninsula pocket area. Is that cool? Yeah, exactly. It's okay. perfect. All right. Now. So that intake area, I guess like we have to be careful. You don't overfill this because if you overfill it, it's not going to do anything. Right. right. The water level has to be perfect that it's sucking well, and it out and then creating that skimming. And that's what I've got to figure out, like the thickness yeah. of that water coming in over all those sides versus right. our flow rate of our pumps. But I'll figure that, because that'll determine how high we build that intake, right? We don't want to have it too close and then we're driving water level up because we're pulling so much water in either. Yeah, like I was thinking like two feet of pond, it, like, it should be 18 inches, right? Like that's what I kind of had in my, yep. in my mind. And I, 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 think you're, I think you're right there though, because we're at two feet of depth. That's the height of my posts are 25 inches because we want to get the bottom of that bridge right at, you know, an inch above water level. Right, so. right. All right. What do you think about the urn area? Everything's plumb, including the two fire ones, which is that one and that one. Then we've got the jumbo. And we're going to just landscape the crap out of this other than that back area behind the jumbo so you can see it from the deck. But all this will just be a ton of evergreens all the way, you know, around us. You good with that, you think? Yeah, then Like, even, like, bring the trees on the right of it right now. Yeah, like, yep. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, right. totally. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because we gotta hide all that crap anyways. That's right, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that looks awesome. Cool, bud. All right, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate you. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. I was I was a wee bit nervous. Joe and I have worked together a fair amount over the past seven, eight, nine years that we've known each other. And he is a genius, but he's also a stickler for details. And when I say details, it's his details, not necessarily my details. So that's a sigh of relief knowing that we've got his blessing and we can continue to move forward because it just feels good knowing that his vision is coming to fruition by what we're doing without him being here. So, Joe, thanks for your patience. And that went better than I thought it was going to. So, good. All right, Jack, you ready to get back at it? Yep. All right. Well, we are at a huge, huge, huge milestone in the project. There's nobody else in here. And there's only one reason for that. One reason for that. And that is because it's time to move the bridge in. We have all eight of us ready to carry this thing in. We went ahead and pre-cut all of our posts. These are not secured yet, but what we're going to do is we're gonna lay the bridge right on top and just tack it together using some construction screws for the time being until we can get everything kind of braced off. The bridge is so long, so wide, heavy, and awkward that we really couldn't put all these legs on it. And I was really worried that we were gonna destroy it trying to bring it in here with the legs and strapping it and all that stuff. So we went ahead and dry set the legs. We cut them all to length. You can see they all have numbers on them. So we measured everything off using our transit. So this bridge should sit nice and level. They are about about a quarter inch shy so that if we have to shim these one way or the other that's all good so let's get back with the other guys get that bridge picked up and bring that thing in here because that would be huge for us to do okay. 